November 1, 2025, Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, and welcome to 121 Point Mike. Today's ground school video is about segmented circles. The what? Exactly. A segmented circle lets you quickly locate the windsock and determine which runway to land on. Of course, knowing which one way to land on is very, very valuable to you in flight and on a test. A segmented circle is a white circle that's got a segmented or dashed border. Sometimes they throw orange in the mix, too. It's got a windsock or perhaps a tetrahedron or a T in the middle that tells you the wind direction. Windsocks and cones are the same thing, and they point downwind. We're all familiar with these. My grandma's had a windsock out on her deck uh, as long as I can remember. Their pointy end is away from the wind, and their uh, wide end is where the wind is coming from. A windsock can also give you the wind speed, though, by kind of, you know, how much it's inflated. You'll take off and land so that the tail of your aircraft aligns with the tail of the windsock. But now tetrahedrons work in the opposite direction, and they act like an arrow telling you where the wind is coming from. And so you'll take off and land with the direction they're pointing. Wind T's look a lot like little airplanes they point in the direction that the wind is coming from. The top of the T is kind of like your wings, and the uh, stem of the T is like your fuselage and tail. So align your aircraft with the wind T and to make sure that you're taking off and landing into the wind. The segmented circle helps you locate the wind indicator when you're overhead. And now you know how to read the different types of wind indicators. But what are those little L's around the segmented circle? Ah, those are the traffic pattern indicators and they'll tell you which way the traffic pattern goes for each of the runways. They're aligned with each runway, so the runway numbers uh, don't matter and they're not shown. They're a graphical indicator of the runway layout. So let me show you some examples. Since standard patterns are to the left, you can expect to see something like this. The long leg of the L depicts the final approach for that runway, and the little shorter leg sticking off depicts the base leg for that runway. For our north-south oriented runway here, you can see that it's a left traffic pattern if you're landing to the north because the little L's on the base leg have you making a left turn onto final. If you're landing to the south, then you can see that it's also left traffic because the little base leg that you, has you making a left turn onto final. So from the air, if the traffic pattern is a standard from both directions, the little symbols kind of look like a little S. Remember, S for standard traffic. Now, you might have some obstacles or a city with noise abatement procedures that requires a right pattern depending on the direction that you're landing. And if that's the case, then the segmented circle will look something like this. You'll see a C shape instead of an S. Remember that the little L's represent the base and final legs of the traffic pattern. Let me draw some examples for some additional demonstrations. Now, sometimes when you fly over, you'll see that the little uh, indicators don't make an S. They make a C or a U shape. Well, that means one of them is a non-standard right-hand traffic, isn't it? Well, since this indicates your base leg, if you envision drawing this out this way, we're making right turns, aren't we, from our base to final. So if you're approaching from this direction, we're flying right traffic. If we're coming from this direction, we're flying left-hand traffic. Because maybe over here, maybe there's an obstruction or maybe some sort of a city that doesn't like you flying over it. And so the traffic goes right hand one way and left hand the other way. So depending on which direction you're coming from. But of course, that's why it's vitally important that you read the windsock. So if you see something like this, the tail of the windsock points towards your final approach course. Um, and so, I mean, you're going to have a crosswind, but obviously you're going to be coming from this direction because the tail is closer to this final approach course. So you're going to be using right-hand traffic on, I mean, if it were this runway here, you'd be, it'd be like runway 27, right? Because you're headed basically west. So that's how you read this and how you enter and exit patterns. So let's say you are, let's use green. So let's say you're over here and you're five miles out. I'm just going to make that a little plain symbol. You're over here and the controller tells you to enter a uh, downwind for 
runway nine. Well, what do you do? Well, the controller just told you that the wind is uh, out of the east, so you know that you'll be landing to the east. If you were to fly over the segmented circle and look at the wind sock, you could confirm that, but the controller's already told you what to do. He said, enter downwind for runway nine. Well, we're using standard traffic, right? So the pattern looks like this, doesn't it? Because you're making left turns as from runway nine. So you're going to basically fly straight on in here at your 45 and turn downwind for runway nine. If the wind were the other way, and we were using, of course, left-hand traffic, right? The pattern for runway 27 would go this way. This is the pattern for 27. This is the pattern for nine, because they're both using left-hand turns, but depending on which way you're coming from, uh, you go either on this side of the runway or on the other side of the runway. But our windsock indicates that the wind is out of, oh, it's not quite aligned with the runway in this example. Say that our wind is probably coming at a one zero zero, but the tail of the windsock is at our final approach course, so we're gonna obviously use runway nine. Now, many airports will have parallel runways to handle additional traffic. If this is the case, the segmented circle will have a pattern indicators back to back, and you can bet that the runway on the right will have a right traffic pattern. And that makes sense, right, though? If the right runway had a left traffic pattern, then the aircraft could collide, and that would be very, very bad. You can see here on the chart for uh, Clarence Page Municipal that they've got a right pattern as indicated by this little RP here on the chart, and it applies to 17 right and 35 right. So here's 17 right, and it's going to the right, which means 17 left goes to the left by default. And the reverse, of course, applies if you're landing to the north. Right runways have right patterns. Left runways have left patterns. And they're shown on segmented circles like this. Now you also see the crosswind runways depicted, maybe like this. If the runway is oriented, say, 150330, then it would be shown on the ground like this, and the little base and final legs depicted accordingly. Now on a test, you're going to be shown a picture of a segmented circle and asked which direction the traffic flows for a particular runway. But now you know how to do that. The point is learning how to use a segmented circle and to identify the correct runway and how to fly the pattern. After going over these few examples, you should be able to do this now, and because it's pretty simple. Remember that the little L's indicate the base and final leg of the rectangular traffic pattern. Turns are normally to the left, but occasionally to, to the right. The segmented circle will tell you how to fly the patterns. Now, of course, you shouldn't wait until you fly over the airport to figure out how to fly. You should check the charts and chart supplements or air nav for information before you leave the ground. At towered airports, they'll tell you what to do on your way in, and you won't have the opportunity or the need to fly over the field and check out the segmented circle or windsock. The segmented circle is really only for the small, non-towered airports, and many large airports don't even have a segmented circle. Flying over the field to check would be a massive collision hazard, and so the controllers uh, will tell you what to do on your way in. Sometimes the pattern will not be marked on a segmented circle, like here at Gainesville Municipal. If this is the case, then you're going to assume left traffic and fly accordingly. I like to use AirNav as one of my flight planning tools, and it will tell you loads of information about your destination airports, including traffic pattern directions. But now you know how to use the segmented circle and how to fly the corresponding traffic patterns. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. It's free and you'll be notified when the next video is out. And stay with me on 121 Point Mike.